Hey guys, we're going to try and refilm this video. I made a video about this and it ended up running like 20 minutes and I knew nobody's going to sit through that. So we're going to redo this and try and keep it uh, well under 10. So I decided to finally buy this Condor double bit axe. And I bought it because I recently learned that Condor upgraded the steel in their axes from 1045 to 1060. So this thing had piqued my interest. I've always been a big fan of uh, small packable double bits. And there's not many on the market at all. So when I heard that they upgraded the steel, I kind of had to have it. And I got it home, and I know Condor kind of has a, a wishy-washy uh, reputation for axes. Some people love them, a lot of people hate them. And I've always avoided them because I didn't like that whole 1045 steel thing. But them making it 1060 made it tough for me to say no. And to be honest, I'm really disappointed in this axe. So we're going to jump right into it. I'm going to be really quick because this isn't a full-fledged review here, guys. This is just kind of an overview of uh, why I'm disappointed in this. And I think what I'm going to do is down the line, I'm going to do some mods, make this axe a little more uh, usable, and then uh, do a full-fledged review a couple months down the line. But consider today just an initial unboxing review with some slight use in it. So first of all, U.S. Forest Service would deny this handle. It's uh, mostly heartwood, and the grain is twisted about 45 degrees on it, which meaning that the grain that starts here, by the time you get to the end, is on the back side. You can see where the grain twists. Really bad for the axe. Uh, really creates a lot of weakness in it. Furthermore, we've got a lot of runoff in the middle of this axe. Runoff is fine, on your palm swell, you know, where the axe thickens or thins. It's not fine in the middle of your axe. That's going to create a tremendous weak spot. So whoever the QC guy is who let this handle through, shame on you. Um, next, a uh, little bit of a complaint about that it is uh, pressed fit. Obviously, you can see there's a little bit of a shelf here. These were hydraulically pressed on. Historically, I've kind of found that these axes that are hydraulically pressed tend to wiggle loose after a little while because, you know, as uh, you change uh, environments, the moisture, uh, there's not as much moisture here as there is in El Salvador, so these, the wood tends to shrink a little and pull back, and it leaves a kind of a loose spot that that shelf where the axe can wiggle around it. It's completely fixable. It's not a big deal. It's like five minutes worth of work, but just wanted to point it out. You know, it is something that's going to cause a great deal of these to uh, wiggle a little bit loose after they uh, dry out. Other than that, it seems to be hung really well. It's got a nice uh, wood wedge with a metal wedge in it. It's a nice tight fit. It's uh, on there really well. The edge, medium sharp. It could definitely be better. I know they do hand grind their edges at the factory, so I'm completely fine with that. You know, I don't expect it to be I don't expect any axe to come to my door laser laser sharp. That's that's on me to get that there. I'd rather, you know, do I'd rather do the edges how I like them. So fit and finish, normal for a condor. They got that special condor finish to them. You know, they're they're drop forged, 1060 steel. It's like 1.75 pounds. And uh, last complaint, it's on a 24 inch handle. Originally these were sold with an 18 inch handle, and for some reason they decided to upgrade to a 24. Oh, you know, I uh, played around with this, you know, kind of holding it at the 18 mark. And it's actually quite comfortable. I'm a little surprised I went up to 24. 24 is a little unwieldy. You know, what you have is an axe that's the same size as a cruiser axe, but half a pound lighter. And uh, given the shape and how short these bits are, it doesn't make it a very good felling axe at all. So you have all the extra length, and it's not a good felling axe. The main problem with this axe is that it has a little bit of an identity crisis. It's the size of a cruiser axe, but isn't going to work so good <laughs> on what a cruiser axe does. And that's because, number one, like I said, the bits are a little on the short side, which I'm sure they did to try and keep it packable. But if you're trying to use this axe for splitting, you know, your handle gets in the way. Your actual, you know, handle is thicker than the head. And the swell of the handle actually comes down to the toe of the bit. So as you're 
using it to split, unless you're kind of splitting high up on the axe, your handle tends, you can see marks here, the wood tends to hang up. It tends to catch on there because, you know, the, the swell starts there and there's not enough room between the eye and the bit to spread out the wood enough to pass it through. So while I was splitting, I did find that it hung up quite a bit. So it's it's that identity crisis thing. It's it's a felling or I'm sorry, a cruiser act should be able to fell trees and split wood and do small light jobs. You know, it's a three quarter sized axe. This one here has a lot of difficulty with splitting. It's fine with kindling. It's small. It's fine with small kindling size stuff. But once you get into bigger pieces, you do run into a little bit of trouble. Likewise. It's not very good for felling. It's kind of undersized. It's not heavy enough of a head, and the bit's very, very short. So when you're trying to get in there to cut your uh, your wedge, you know it's difficult to get into that angle there. It's it's you just don't have enough room to reach in. And once again, I found that I was whacking the handle on the edges there and scuffing it up, which to me says, you know, under hard use, this thing's going to have some issues because, you know. So what we have is we have a camp axe that's not very packable. It's too long to wear on your belt, which they give you a belt sheath with it. So it's too long to wear on your belt. It's the right size to put on a backpack or a canoe or whatever, but it's not heavy enough to do the big jobs that you're going to want. So it's kind of like a kindling axe on a full-size axe body, and it, it kind of contradicts itself. I really think, that, and the shame of this whole thing is, this axe head is pretty much, like, as useful as a hatchet. This is, this is what a hatchet does, those light, small jobs. And they put it on this big, huge handle, and it just doesn't work. It's, it's not cohesive. It just... You know, I tried using this for various jobs. You know what? This thing is an absolute top-notch limber. I went into the brush, took down some limbs, fantastic. Went and cut some small kindling, fantastic. You know, did some splitting and making some small kindling, fantastic. Felling, sucks. Splitting large wood, sucks. So I don't know what kind of was thinking by putting this big, huge handle on this. This thing really needs like a 20, maybe a 22-inch handle. And it would probably be perfect. But it needs a much thinner handle. It needs something that's out of the way. And I, I just don't get what kind of was thinking on this. It's had a lot of potential to be a good kind of packable camp axe that you could bring. But my God, why would I bring three pounds of axe when it can only do what a hatchet does? I'd rather bring, you know, a two-pound hatchet that I'll probably be able to get better use out of. This thing's kind of awkward it is you know like that long handle yeah it gives you that uh, ability to take down some trees but you know with the way it's designed and the bits and all that you only have you know you got four inch bits so say you're cutting into a six inch tree and you're hitting the middle you know you're always going to be scuffing up these edges and catching those edges of the uh, handle on there it really you know it just it just doesn't work <laughs> there's no other way to explain it it's just uh the whole thing's kind of awkward and weird, and, and it's a shame because it's, it, I really like the idea of, uh, you know, the packable uh, double bit axe, you know, the Nesmic style, but this just uh, isn't it. So we're going to make some mods. The uh, idea being, I think I'm going to um, put this thing maybe on a 20 or 22 inch handle, smooth it out, thin it out. I'm going to sharpen this thing up like you wouldn't believe, and definitely... Uh, take down and thin out one of the edges quite a bit to make it a little better of a, uh, a feller and see if we can turn this thing into a good uh, belt axe because <coughs> it's definitely not right now. I mean, I can't have a 24 inch hanging off my uh, my belt, you know, and as far as packing it, if I'm going to pack in three pounds, I'd rather pack in uh, a better hatchet. So there you go, guys. I think I went a little over on the time I said, but a little disappointing and we're going to... Uh, Try and make some mods and put this thing through some heavier use and uh, update you on it down the line.